This mysterious story begins when the Archduke, a man named Damien Keen Dyers, scolded the girl the man didn't understand how she dared to bring Liliana to tears. It was the fiancé of the very girl he was scolding, but she didn't care at all anymore. She no longer feels love, anger, or hatred, only annoyance. Like a real idiot, she fell in love with this duke at first sight. It's been four years since then, and from that moment every day the girl traveled long distances, even in the worst weather. She came to him. In order to get his attention, she cured him of a long illness. Count Serkia's family, who received the patronage of the imperial family. All in whom this blood flows can use and pass on healing abilities from generation to generation. And having seen its power, Damien, he offered Ariani to be his bride. She knew, of course, that he would only do it to use her for his own gain. But the girl thought that if she tried hard enough, he would at least once a bang at her the way she looked at her. Damien constantly postponed the wedding under any excuse, and only allowed himself to be touched when he felt really bad. Ariani held on as best she could until he brought the woman into the house. He brought her in his arms and asked her to heal the woman. Of course Ariani obeyed, for she loved the Archduke. And from the moment the stranger awoke, all of Ariani's senses vanished, as if they didn't exist. In fact, she knew all those three years of trying were for nothing, she just loved him, so she tried to deny it. Ariani thought let it be by his decision and one day met him and told him they were breaking off their engagement. Damien didn't expect this, but the girl said she was leaving the two of them so they could live happily ever after. Ariani at this point took off her ring, handed it over, and said that she would not interfere with them. Damien got angry and asked what other engagement breakup. What was it with her? How dare she even think of such a thing? Ariani said that there was no more idiot Serkia family who loved him. That's why it's over between them. And just as she was about to leave, she felt a sharp pain in her back. The girl had missed a moment. Namely that her fiancé turned out to be a complete psychopath and stuck a sword in her back. The man then approached Ariana and said that he had thought the girl would be obedient, and he couldn't let others use her powers. The girl had no way of knowing why she was so foolishly in love with an idiot like him. Ariana, if she goes back in time, will not make the same mistake again. She would tear his heart and soul into little pieces, just as he had done to her in that life. She would not let the situation happen again. And then, a moment later, Ariana heard someone's voice calling her. She opened her eyes immediately. Then she felt someone holding her hand. When she turned around, she saw that her father, who had died two years ago, was next to her. The man asked her how she could sleep so long on her birthday. Didn't she think he was really scared because she hadn't woken up for a long time? Ariana was very surprised and asked what her father was talking about. What birthday? But the man laughed and said she probably still wasn't awake. Let her get up as soon as possible. Ariana didn't know if it was a dream or reality. She wondered if those painful memories were just a dream. Then she called her father and asked, What year am I now? The man was surprised but said it was the 829th Imperial Year. Specifically, it was the 15th of June. It was then that Ariana realized that she was back on her birthday, which was a whole four years ago. Ariad still couldn't believe that she was seeing her father right in front of her, and asked, Was it really him? The man laughed and said of course it was him, and who else could it be? Ariana's dear father decided to honor his stubborn daughter's request, and went to the battlefield to retrieve a gift for the Archduke. And he ended up following her mother and resting in peace, but now her father is right in front of her. The girl was very happy to see him, so she even cried when her father asked her what upset her so much. She just hugged him very tightly. She asked, This isn't a dream, really standing in front of her, is it? The man hugged his daughter in response, and he told his darling daughter that she must have had a nightmare. He asked the cooks to make all her favorite dishes. Everything has to be perfect on the big day, so Ariana, get ready and hurry to the dining room. As the man walked out the door, the girl closed them and thought that it couldn't all be just a dream. Those horrible days in the Archduke's house and her similar end. But Ariana was determined that no matter how it went, she would not miss this wonderful chance she had been given. One thing she can already be happy about now? Damien suffers from an illness that conventional doctors can't deal with. And for now, the man doesn't know that only Ariata can heal him. The girl thought she could use this opportunity to destroy him. But if she is unprepared, she will put herself in great danger. She needs the strength to protect her family. And the force that would go to war in her father's place. The girl thought that there was a man who fit all of those criteria perfectly after all. 
a man who is far more powerful than Damien, namely a man named Cassidine. This was the person who was a servant by origin and became the commander of the Imperial Knights, thanks to the help of the Crown Prince. In his past life, he was described with many words, such as God of War and Handsome Man who received the favor of the Crown Prince, as well as the Great Swordsman who appear once in a thousand years. Ariana thought she couldn't lose her father in the war one more time. A man who's stronger than Damien, so he can return safely from the war. He's the best in the entire empire, even on the entire continent. And right now, Cassidine is acting as a servant gladiator for the fights. And only a year later, the crown prince will turn his attention to him and bring the boy into the imperial family. Ariana thought that if she could get him before the prince to nurture him as well as raise him, that one will become a sword for their family. The girl is no longer as naive as she was in the past. And in order to protect her father and herself, she's willing to use anyone and any means necessary. After a while, Rihanna had already packed up and went down to the dining room where a table was already set up. As she sat down, the girl said that there was too much food on the table. But father was surprised and said that it was her birthday, so she could eat more food. After that, he asked her what she wanted as a gift. He could buy gems or he could buy dresses. Ariana said she had only one wish. Her father smiled and said he would do anything for his daughter. Then the girl replied that she really wanted to have a younger brother. The man was very surprised. He even coughed. Afterward, I asked my daughter what that meant. Does she want a younger brother? Does she really want him to remarry? But Ariana said there was absolutely no need for that. She was going to bring him in herself. Afterward, she asked her father if he could just trust her. The man sighed and said that she knew he only trusted her. But he really doesn't understand why she needs a little brother. In fact, in the Seville Empire, if war breaks out, one man from each family must go to battle. And if you violate this law, you could face forfeiture of title, confiscation of property, or death. Should Ariana take in the unfortunate Cassidine, who suffers the life of a servant at gladiatorial fights, and treat him well and keep him close, then he will be able to go to the battlefield in place of his father as her younger brother. Still, Cassidine could become the commander of the Imperial Knights, and the only man who could defeat Damien in battle. Then suddenly the father spoke again, and said that he and the girl had enough in one family. Ariana said that she of course realizes that it sounds strange enough, but she asks him to listen to her words one time. The girl asked if he thought it could be a big problem. If others found out that they had a healer in their family, and a strong person could always come in handy. That's why she needs a younger brother, who can always protect her and also her father. Ariana said that she had never asked him for such a thing. She will bring a great and strong man who can protect them. He will definitely like him. The father thought about it and said that actually he couldn't even imagine his daughter thinking such a thing. And he certainly believes his daughter wouldn't throw around words like that. Surely she's doing it out of reason. She'd always been a smart girl after all. Then her father had said the little brother was this or someone else. She could bring him. Ariana was very excited. She immediately ran to her father and hugged him tightly. He told the girl to be sure to bring the right person, because under no circumstances would he allow a suspicious person to enter the Count's house. After breakfast, Ariana went up to her chambers and the maid Sasha changed. When she saw her, she was amazed. She said that Lady just looks beautiful, but still something is missing. Sasha then brought out the jewelry, and when she started to put it on the girl, she asked how she felt about this necklace and earrings. She thought it would fit her perfectly. Ariana looked in the mirror. She thanked the maid and said she really liked the way it looked. After that, Sasha asked, because it was her birthday, she has to go somewhere. Ariana smiled and said she did. She would be traveling on very important business. And after a while, the girl got into the carriage. After that, they did arrive at the place. When the carriage stopped, the butler helped the girl out and told her that they had arrived at the gladiatorial fighting arena. When they got inside, there were a lot of people there. But Ariana was glad she couldn't see the Imperial family yet. She needed to get the boy faster than the prince. Then Ariana and her escort approached the man in charge of the guests and told him to escort them to a better place. The indignant shouts of the crowd were heard from behind, yelling for them to get in line. But the girl took the bag of money and said she would give him as much as he needed. The man immediately said that of course he would escort her out. But Ariana also added that as an apology for walking past the line. Let her pay all the tickets for the other spectators, too. The man was very surprised and asked if she really wanted to pay for everyone. Well, 
Ariana happily said that yes, she would pay for every ticket. And she thought that there was a lot of money in their family anyway, and in return for the exclusive right to treat the Imperial part, rather than fully provide for Serkia's family. Of course, no one knows about it but them. But Ariana broke the deal when she healed Damien in a previous life. She showed her skills and it turned out to be used. That's what love is. Ariana decided that she would not make such an idiotic mistake again. And at that moment, she was escorted to the best place possible. When the girl looked down, she immediately saw him and thought he was there too. Ariana heard a conversation between two men who were sitting a little lower down. The guy with the blonde hair said that he only came to look at him, his partner asked. He's talking about a man with such silver hair. The man agreed and said he looks soft, but is a great fighter, actually. He's also pretty sure half the audience came to watch him. Of course, they were talking about Cassidyne. Ariana looked down and immediately saw him and their gazes suddenly met. The girl was surprised. She didn't realize for sure if he was a servant gladiator, because he looked good enough, even better than the others. Ariana thought he was probably there to please the eyes. After all, looks shouldn't be important to gladiators. But then suddenly, someone's voice spoke up and said that the dear audience had been waiting for this for a very long time. At that moment, joyful shouts from everyone present could be heard, telling them to already start soon. The judge of this show said it was interesting to see which servant would be the last one left and survive. The man said that before the battle begins, one must first listen to the rules of combat, and he explained that the weapon belongs to the servant who takes it first. There is only one rule and that is to kill your enemy and survive in the process. Ariana was frightened when she heard this. She realized that apparently these warriors were not even people to them. They were just toys, which you can just throw away if they suddenly become useless. But then suddenly the judge said this is the moment, and the battle begins. When the gladiators heard this, they immediately ran towards the weapons that were lying in the center of the field with a loud shout. But while the men disassembled the guns, only Cassidine just stood there and watched the whole thing without moving. The gladiators dismantled their weapons and began killing each other, the people cheering and cheering the deaths. And Ariana watched it all with horror. Let me treat my servants worse than even cattle. However, seeing it all with your own eyes in the arena is far worse than just knowing about it. At that moment, a warrior with a sword began to approach Cassidine. He swung at the boy and shouted for him to die, but the guy quickly managed to react and dodged his blow. Then he grabbed the warrior by the arm so that his sword fell out and twisted him. As the man cried out in pain, Cassidine quickly grabbed the sword that had fallen from his hands and slit the man's throat. But there was no time to think because another warrior ran at the boy from behind. Cassidine easily dispatched the other one. And a moment later there were many dead gladiators lying in the arena which was filled with blood. And only Cassidine alone stood by. Silence filled the arena for a moment. But when people realized what had happened, they shouted joyfully, cheering the warrior on. But the guy didn't pay attention to all of them. He was only interested in the girl who was sitting on the balcony. And at that moment, the referee ran into the arena and said that it was a good show. He then announced that Cassidine was the winner of this battle. The man said it was rare enough to find such a handsome servant and asked who could. Pay the most and get a chance to spend a hot night with him. Ariana was flabbergasted when she heard that. But suddenly people started shouting out different amounts. Someone said 10,000 gold pieces. Others were shouting and saying more and more amounts. Then an old man shouted that he would give $500,000 for this guy. When the judge heard this, his eyes glistened. He asked if anyone would offer a larger sum for such a fine fellow. And at that moment, the girl raised her hand and said she was giving $5 million. After that, she said that she wanted him for more than one night. It was Ariana, of course. She looked at the judge and asked if five million would be enough to take him away completely. Everyone present was shocked. Even the judge had not expected such a turn of events. When Ariana was given no answer, she asked if she had not asked him a question. The man said, sure, why not? That amount would be enough and she could have him for herself. Afterward, the guy who had escorted the girl to the stand then took her to the place where Cassidine lived. When the girl got out of the carriage, he wished her a good time. After that, she went inside and told the servant at once that they needed to talk. Cassidine started to move closer to her and took off his shirt. The girl was surprised and asked what he was doing. The guy was surprised and asked if that's what she bought it for. After that he turned to the mistress and said that he was ready right now to spend the night with her. 
Ariana immediately said no and explained that she didn't bring him to spend the nights. Cassidine was surprised and asked what she was talking about. Then why did she ransom him? The girl said she just couldn't take her eyes off his eyes, who seemed to be begging for help, and she thought she'd have to mix lies and truths to make him less wary of her. Ariana took his hand and said she understood his desperation immediately. Looking at her, he added that it was just awful, that even on the back of his hand he has so many scars, so much pain and suffering. Afterward, she brought the healing ointment and said that she had originally thought to buy him back just and let him go, but she fears that this way he might be dragged back into the gladiator arena and used to entertain others. At this moment, Ariana stopped talking and ran her hand over his skin. Immediately, a bright light appeared. When the girl let go, Cassidine looked at his hand and was surprised. There wasn't a scratch there. The boy looked at her and asked in horror how she had done such a thing. Ariana explained that it was a magical ointment that was secretly passed down in their family. Cassidine asked the mistress what she was using such a valuable thing on him for. The girl answered that it was valuable, but human life was much more important. I thought to myself at that moment that it was actually just an ordinary herbal ointment, when the guy suddenly lowered his head and said he'd killed a lot of people. Well, Ariana replied that let him not blame himself for it after all. He had to do it just to survive. Then she asked if he hadn't killed them because he just wanted to. The guy replied in a sad voice that he had. Ariana sat down next to him and asked why he became a gladiator servant. Where's his family? Cassidine was silent for a bit. After that, he said that he had no family. They had all died a long time ago. He was just wandering the world with everything alone and ended up in the arena. But then he looked at the girl and asked if he could find out what kind of person she was. Ariana smiled and said that she was the only daughter of Count Serkia. Her mother had died almost immediately after her birth. Then she asked how old he was anyway. Cassidine replied that he was already 18. The girl said that meant she was two years older than him. After a long silence, she looked him straight in the eye and asked him so what he thought about being her little brother. Cassidine was very surprised and asked how else the younger brother was. Ariana said that's the way it is. He will get rid of the stigma of being a servant and become part of the Earl's family. If that happens, he won't have to live like that anymore. He won't have to kill other people. No one will be able to just ignore him. Then the girl got out of bed, held out her hand to him and asked if he would become her family. Cassidine thought for a moment. After that, he smiled back at her and replied that if that was what she wanted, he was willing to do anything. The girl said that in that case she would introduce herself again. Her name is Ariani Serkia. The boy called her Mistress Ariani. But the girl immediately replied that he didn't need to address her that way. They would become a family. Cassidine lowered his head at this point and thought for a moment. And after that, he looked at the girl and called her Big Sister, saying the word a few more times. He also thanked her and said Ariana has such a warm heart. But at this moment, the girl was somehow even uncomfortable. Perhaps it was because he was easily adaptable to his environment. Or perhaps it was all because of that strange facial expression that appeared for just a moment. Well, Ariana has to make Cassidine a part of their family by any means necessary in order to protect her father and herself. And what he thinks at this point? She absolutely doesn't care. When the girl went out the door, and said that now they would go to the right place, and thought that now this guy would be her dear little brother. Shield and sword. Cassidine smiled and said, yes, we can go. Ariana thought at that moment that she wanted him to use her the same way she was using him. So after some time they arrived at Ariana's estate. They were immediately greeted by her father. He was shocked when he found out that the guy she brought was a servant gladiator. He then asked that he and his daughter be alone together. When Ariana came to his office, he started yelling at her. The man said he'd just freak out if she decided to make him her guard. But younger brother, what the hell is she thinking? The father said he would throw him out right away. And the girl at that moment thought that was right. She hadn't warned him that she was bringing a servant. Then the girl apologized for doing things her way. But she said she had thought it through. If war came, he would have to go to the only man. Well, if there is another man in the family, he will be able to avoid such a fate. Cassidine is actually a very talented man who will be able to come back even after the war. Her father turned to Ariana and asked if she had planned all this from the beginning. What was she even thinking? The girl was about to say something, but her father came up to her and replied that he understood her. Then he turned away and said that he just needed time to be alone. 
she would give him that time to gather his thoughts. After that, Ariana walked out the door, looking out the window. She saw that it was just about time for the red sun to set. At the same time she died at Damien's hands, she healed his heart, and he plunged his sword into hers. The human-like screams of the birds constantly remind the girl that she must not forget who she died for. In order to make it a thousand times worse for the lady than he had made it for her, she could not miss Cassidine. No way. He should definitely be her little brother. After a while she walked into his room and the boy glared at her. She turned to the servants and said they were good. They could go now. Let them bring the food directly to his room. He must be hungry. Meanwhile, the other servants had already made costumes for him and were helping to dress him. When everyone left the room, the boy asked his sister if he looked strange. But Ariana smiled and said not at all. On the contrary, it suits him very well. And she added that this room had finally found its owner. Cassidine lowered his head and said that he didn't think someone like him should get that much attention. The girl took his hands and told him not to say that under any circumstances. She had brought him to them. So now he was a member of their family, and he needn't worry. Ariana would convince his father. Cassidine looked the girl straight in the eyes and said that he would be sure to prove his worth. Ariana said okay and then asked if he needed anything else. She would order if he needed anything else. The guy thought for a moment and afterwards said that he had lived with a sword in his hands for so long that it was very somehow even strange without it. He would be very happy to have any sword, not necessarily a good one. Ariana replied that fine, she would find it, and asked if he needed anything besides a sword, maybe something he liked, but Cassidine replied that it would be quite enough. Even now it was as if he were in a dream, but he must tell her one thing. He looked at the girl carefully, and said that he thought he liked her, even from the first time they met. He can't look away. Cassidine added that if it was a dream, he hoped he never woke up. But even if she threw it away, there was no way he would hate it. Ariana looked at him and thought he was so desperate. A beast who in one day of their meeting was already throwing around the right words. Surely there must be some reason the guy's still alive. Those eyes begging me not to leave him. Then the girl said that she is not going to leave him. She promises. So let him feel free around her. Ariana thought it would be best to play along. She would be his silly little sister until the guy opened his heart. The girl would be more caring and good than anyone else. Then, before leaving the room, she told him to rest and not to worry, and also that her room was right next door so he could come over whenever he wanted. The boy said goodnight to her, and then she left. After that, Ariana went back to her room and began to study a book. This book was about medicinal and poisonous herbs that only grow in the north. She would have been very hard to find if not for the healer's help. The girl thought for a moment. Around the same time last year, the emperor was completely cured and their family became much richer because of it. But because of that, rumors started to spread that they had a hidden mine. Like this at the crown prince's 20th birthday party, Ariana met him. And because of that, a lot of their family's money went to Damien. And just like that, the girl eventually met a tragic end. Ariana thought she wouldn't miss this evening for anything. There's a month left until the crown prince's birthday reception. She needs to know more to go up against Damien. The Northern Territory belongs to him, so Ariana shouldn't miss a shred of information. But then suddenly, as she was about to go to sleep, Cassidy knocked on her room and told her sister that he had something he wanted to tell her. The girl was very surprised because it was about to dawn, but she sat up and told him to come in. The guy was wearing only a bathrobe. He closed the door behind him and said that he knew it was rude to come to her at such a time. However, he couldn't sleep. Cassidine started to get closer to her and said that she said he could come any time. So the guy decided to come no matter what. With these words, he sat down next to her on the bed. Then Ariana answered that it was nothing. She was reading a book and had just laid down. Cassidine asked her what kind of book she was reading. The girl said it was about the plants of the north. But the boy said the last phrase with her. Ariana was surprised and wondered if he could read. Cassidine replied that a rarer product cost much more. With these words, he took the book, and in order to survive, he had to learn to write and read, as well as learn aristocratic etiquette. Let her servants be mere commodities to the empire. In fact, the more servants know, the harder it is to control them, so usually in the Seville Empire they can't even learn to write or even read. Ariana was surprised that he read the title of the book so easily, but she decided that she would not interrogate him for the time being. He was still wary of her after all. Then the girl replied that she was very tired, 
but he could not worry, it would not happen again. Cassidine said that due to his intense worries he couldn't sleep, and if it was okay with his sister, he asked if he could lie down next to her. Ariana realized that this was just a test, she needed to prove the sincerity of her intentions again. Then she lifted the blanket and said that if he wanted it so badly, please let him lie down. As Cassidine lay down next to her, the girl said that apparently the change of scenery was bothering him. The boy replied that he was too, but more than anything else. It's that every night he dreams of those he was forced to kill. They reach out their bloody hands and ask in a hoarse whisper why they are dead. Ariana said it wasn't his fault at all, he understood that. But the boy didn't reply, saying that murder was murder and there was no getting away from it. The girl turned to Cassidine and said that he was gnawed with guilt towards those he had killed, and that was fine, but he had not swung his sword for the sake of killing, but for his own protection. But at this point, she thought, she definitely wouldn't have appeared in Damien's dreams. But then suddenly the boy said that it was the first time he had heard such words. Ariana asked in horror what kind of life he had then. Cassidine hesitated and said it was nothing much, nothing at all, nothing interesting. For a while they just lay there looking at each other. Then the girl stroked his head and told him not to get attached to his past. In time, wounds heal and it is not worth it to open them again. He has only good days of life ahead of him, Cassidine smiled, took the girl's hand and said that she was the only person in the arena that shone so brightly, and she shone even brighter up close. Afterward, he thanked his sister for taking him along, and they closed their eyes and fell asleep. As Ariana lay there pretending to sleep, she could actually feel his gaze on her. Just to be sure, she opened her eyes and saw that he was looking at her after all. After some more time, Cassidine wanted to stroke her hair. With a mocking smile, he wished his sister sweet dreams and started to leave. When Ariana was alone, she immediately opened her eyes and thought he was a liar. Pretending to be a sweet sister, however, she likens herself to him. In the fate of a servant in the gladiatorial arena, there are no feelings other than cruelty. Of course, the girl didn't expect him to trust her right away. She's just waiting for the guy to adjust to his new life. At Cassidine's birthday banquet, she is sure to meet Damien. Until then, Ariana needs to put him on the family registry and help him settle in. The problem, however, is that she knows absolutely nothing about Cassidine. They had only met once in her past life. Cassidine was standing behind the crown prince's back, and that was when their gazes met. Ariana thought she should find out at least a little more about him. The girl is ready to give the guy everything he wants and fulfill all his dreams. After all, they are responsible for those they have tamed. With these thoughts, the girl fell asleep. The next morning, having cleaned herself up, Ariana left the room. At that moment, a maid ran up to her. Sasha told the mistress that the master was calling for her. Ariana answered that she would be right there, and then asked if she knew where Cassidine had gone, because there was no one in the room. Sasha just said she had to go to her father, then she would know everything. When Ariana arrived, she saw Cassidine covered in blood. The girl was shocked, and her father said that it was indeed the smell of the incense from the mountain temple he had spoken of. Ariana was indignant and asked if he had sent him to get medicinal herbs in a cave near a steep cliff to the west. They say a monster lives there. The girl asked why Cassidine had gone to look for those herbs. The father turned to his daughter and said that he had been thinking about him the whole time last night. And after thinking a lot, he came to only one conclusion. If he could pass the test, his father would accept him into the family. His father said that the boy had already passed the first stage of the test, and since that was the case, he should give the next task. Ariana was surprised. She walked over to the boy and told her father to wait. Afterwards, she asked if Cassidine was hurt. The boy replied that he was fine. He was just stained with the blood of the beasts that were in the temple. Then the girl turned to her father and said that she thought she could do without the other stages. Whatever task he was given, Cassidine could handle it all. When the girl asked, since he had brought healing herbs, it meant that he had already proven his worth. So Ariana told her father to allow him to be listed as her younger brother. He would surely become the pride of their family. The girl said she was the one who brought Cassidine and if her father wouldn't accept him because of his servant status, then let him remove her from the registry. The father was shocked. He asked what she was saying. After that, there was silence in the room. Ariana thought that even though she looked like a cranky child now, it couldn't be helped. She couldn't delay her acceptance into the clan. Then the father went up to his daughter and said that she was breaking his heart. 
Why does she care so much about that servant? You can't judge a person just by their pretty face. Ariani told her father that he likes to enjoy wood tea, and it's actually grown on a servant's plantation. Most of them were once aristocrats, but at one point they lost everything they hold dear, including their position in society. The property was confiscated and they were made servants. A title is a fleeting thing, like a dream on a summer night or winter frost on the branches. Today the title is there, for tomorrow it might not be. The girl said that Cassidine is just like them. Let him let him be part of their family. The father was silent for a while, and afterwards said that some people say there are no parents in the world who win an argument with their children. He sighed heavily and told Ariani that they would do as she wished. The girl was immediately happy, hugged her father and began to thank him. Her father laughed and told her to never again even think about deregistering. His heart nearly sank into his heels. He asked, and who was his daughter so stubborn about? Ariani replied that of course she was, as the girl turned to Cassidine and called out to him, telling him to come over since they were now one family. The boy smiled and replied that he was very happy about it, and called her the Duke's sister and father. At this point, the girl thought that everything had finally resolved itself very well. When evening came, Cassidine went to take a bath, but his back was very scarred from the beatings. As he climbed into the hot water, he remembered his new sister's words that she wanted him to officially be her brother. He liked to call her sister, but the boy thought she was some kind of strange girl. After that, Cassidine wondered about impulsive decisions. He was just curious to see her pissed off, but feeling as if he'd spent himself an unreasonable child. The guy thought that apparently she was a nice enough person, but his goal wouldn't be thwarted. If it can be used, Cassidine doesn't care what the future has in store for him. The next morning Ariana went to the market because the guy told her she needed a sword. She decided she would give him a gift in honor of becoming part of their family, and walked over to the gun department. Then she approached and noticed a rather interesting specimen that interested the girl. She said she looked rather unusual that evening. The salesman immediately ran up to her and told her she had a rather sighted worm. It's a sword with a very real story. It was used by the crown prince of the fallen kingdom of Hyren. At that moment, Ariana wondered if it had such a rich history. Then why isn't the sword for sale just collecting dust on the display case? Then the salesman quoted the girl a price, and it made sense to her why no one had bought it, but she thought Cassidine might suit such a thing. It wasn't until closer to evening that the girl finally came home. She went into his room and asked if he was there, and at that moment Cassidine came out of the shower to meet her, wearing only a robe. He was very surprised to see his sister, but Ariana explained that he didn't answer when she called, so the girl was worried and went in. Cassidine apologized to her for making her worry. It was just that he was in the bathroom, so he hadn't heard anything. At that moment, the girl handed him a box and told him to open it. The brother was surprised and asked what it was, but Ariana told him to just open it and he would understand. So the boy opened the box and saw the blade there. Cassidine was very surprised by this. He asked where else she had gotten such a dagger and looked at her suspiciously. Ariana explained that it was given to her at a shop nearby. She thought of it, so she bought it. Only the seller said there was no sheath for it. But Cassidine, studying his blade, said that there should be a scabbard to it. The girl was surprised, and asked how he knew that. The guy explained that usually such daggers always came with a set, and the scabbard even more so for something this good. Strange enough that there were none. Ariana was surprised, and asked if it was true, because according to the seller, they had been lost for a long time. Also, the man here said this sword was used by the crown prince of some kingdom. Ariana thought about it and tried to remember what it was called. After a while, she said that he called the kingdom Hyron. Cassidine frowned and said that was understandable. Then the girl asked if it was worth ordering a new scabbard. But the man replied that it was not necessary at all. In the gladiatorial arena, he has dealt with all sorts of weapons, so it's not a problem at all. He's even very happy about it. Ariana then stepped closer to him and congratulated him from the bottom of her heart, telling him that he was now in their family. Cassidine thanked her. After that, he said that his sister was too kind to him. It was a great fortune for him to meet her. If it wasn't for her, Cassidine would have to continue fighting in the arena. He stepped even closer. After that, he put his hand on her shoulder and said that now he didn't want to lose that mental warmth. There was only one person he saw in the stadium, and that was her. The brother hugged his new sister and said it was like she was an angel that had come down to him from heaven. 
Ariana closed her eyes and agreed with him. Afterward, she added that she was also grateful that he would be her new family, but she said that usually her sisters didn't hug so tightly. Cassidine was surprised and asked if that was true. Then he let the girl go and said that he couldn't remember when he had felt something like that. After that, he apologized to her. Ariana thought he was so funny. She didn't realize how stupid she looked in his eyes. Then she took the guy's hand and told him that if things got too hard for him, he could always count on her. She thought that in principle, he might continue to think of her as a nice, silly girl, and said that if he couldn't sleep, she would sing him a lullaby. And if the day was clear, they would go to the garden to look at the flowers. From now on, Cassidine would fill their days with only happy moments. At that moment, Ariana thought that just as slowly as paint dissolves in water, let him dissolve into it without a trace. Then suddenly the guy asked, Does that mean he can come to her room again? Ariana smiled and replied that of course she would hold his hand until he fell asleep. But then suddenly Cassidine asked, Did siblings usually do this? The girl thought for a moment, and then said they were an unusual brother and sister then. She did not know how this strange game of brinksmanship would end. After this conversation, they moved to Ariana's bedroom. When they got into bed, the guy asked her why she was so eager to take him in. She even decided to get herself removed from the registry. The girl replied that she had promised him, hadn't she? Ariana replied that he told her himself that if she left him, he wouldn't hate her. But she wasn't going to leave him. Cassidine asked if she was doing it to keep her promise. The girl said that too but primarily because she didn't want to see his tears and hear the plea not to leave him. She just wants to make him happy so that he doesn't think about the past, but lives a happy present. Cassidine fixed the hair in her face and replied that he was very happy. She turned away from him, closed her eyes, and said good night. But she could still feel his persistent and scrutinizing gaze. Still, she tried to relax somehow and fall asleep in order to let Cassidine's guard down. Demian appeared to her again in her dreams that night, and she woke up in a cold sweat of terror that morning. Ariana was just lousy at heart because of this horrible dream, even though the weather outside the window was perfect. She looked beside her then. She saw Cassidine had already gone to his room, but when she looked at the bookshelf, she noticed there was one missing. But at that moment the maid Sasha came into her room. She said that she had found out what the lady had asked for. Ariana then asked, and what did she find out? Sasha immediately approached her and told her that his past was very strange. The maid said that the man might not be a servant at all. The girl was surprised and asked her what she was talking about. Sasha explained that she had struggled, but still managed to find a slave trader who had stumbled upon Cassidine a few years ago. That one was just lying unconscious on the road, and the clothes he was wearing were quite expensive. So the slave trader thought that Ariana's ward was of noble birth. The girl asked if this was true. Sasha said that he remembered Cassidine well because the meeting was a surprise to him. He even remembers exactly where he found it. The maid doesn't think Cassidine is lying. Ariana thought at that moment that manners are hard enough to learn. Aristocrats live side by side with etiquette from birth. The girl decided that she needed to be more attentive to him after all. So she took out her jewelry box. She then took out the jewelry and gave it to Sasha, telling her that she did well so this was her reward. The maid was shocked. Ariana looked at her and asked if these jewels weren't enough. Maybe she should get some more. Sasha said no. What is she talking about? She wasn't doing it for the reward. It was enough that she was able to help her. Sasha was worried because Mistress hadn't been like herself lately. But then suddenly she apologized and said that she herself didn't know what she was saying. Let Mistress forget everything she had said to her before. Ariana looked at the maid, smiled, and simply thanked her. After that, she explained that she's been really tired lately, so she understands why Sasha would think that. Then she asked the maid who was very worried about her. So today, let her have a good rest, and she really hopes that the maid will accept all the gems. Sasha said, How could it be so? But the girl interrupted her and said that her arm would get stiff. Let her take it quickly and go to rest. With these words she handed her a jewelry box. After the death of the return to the past, most of the events remained the same. But Ariana first met Sasha. If she'd had such a lying, faithful maid at the time, maybe things would have turned out differently. But the lady would not allow her to bring her servants to his estate. So Ariana found herself merely a bird in his cage. He lavished her with attention. Only when her magical ability was needed, 
and as a result she was a jilted bride who was the perfect prey for bullying. And on the prince's birthday, when the girl meets Damien, what a look on her face. After that, when it was nearing noon, Ariana and Cassidine went out for a walk in the garden. The girl walked ahead and said that it was the garden of their estate, and afterward asked if he liked it. The guy didn't hesitate and said everything was insanely beautiful. Afterward, he walked over to one of the flowers and said that these blue roses looked a lot like her. Ariana wondered and asked, And then why did Cassidine explain that unlike red roses, blue roses are very rare? Even in the language of flowers, blue roses mean impossibility, and they are quite difficult to grow, and he himself is seeing them for the first time. Cassidine looked at the girl and said they were so beautiful it was hard to even look away, and they looked like a sister. Ariana walked over to the flower bed, plucked a rose, and said that the most beautiful flowers in the world were doomed to wither anyway. Their rarity is absolutely fleeting. When she held out the rose to her brother and asked if it made sense the moment the petals began to crumble, the gardener would cut them off. But when she looked at the look on his face, she asked, doesn't he agree? The guy took the rose from her and said he just didn't mean it. Ariana replied that she knew. She just wanted to say that not all people are happy to be compared to flowers. Her brother thanked her and said that he would remember that. So they went on. The girl said she had a book missing from her shelf and asked if he was the one who took it. But Cassidine was surprised and asked how it was a missing book. Ariana said it wasn't on the shelf when she woke up and wondered if someone had stolen it. Even though it wasn't important to her, it was still kind of weird. Then she asked her brother if he remembered the book he'd seen last time. It was also called Plants of the North. Cassidine said that if she let him, he could help him find it. At that moment, Ariana thought that while she slept, he was the only one who could have taken her. The flattery he whispered in her ear, and that affectionate, innocent smile, and the comparison to a blue rose. Back in their very first meeting, he hid behind a mask. All of this is nothing but falsity, as well as the girl's lies. I wonder why in the past the crown prince had treated such a person well. The serene prize days flew by. Ariana's father officially welcomed Cassidine into their family, and the girl promised to hide by all means his origin. However, as soon as they went out in public, everyone immediately paid attention to him. People said he was so handsome, exactly the son of an aristocrat, as if he wasn't even a person at all. Ariana figured it wouldn't even occur to anyone that he was a former servant. And so as they were walking through town one day, the girl asked his parents what they were like. Cassidine was surprised, but answered anyway that his father was very courteous, and his mother was famous for her strength. They were good people. Then Ariana really asked if he had any brothers or sisters, but the guy replied that he was the only one in the family. Then he turned to the girl and said that he enjoyed just walking around with her. Ariana replied that she was too and asked if he needed anything. Cassidine said no. He just wanted to continue to accompany her. At that moment, the boy took her hand and kissed it. But then suddenly she said that in a week's time, there would be a reception in honor of the crown prince's birthday. Their family was invited to the imperial palace every year, but father couldn't go this time because of business. Ariana said that was why she had to go. Cassidine, hearing this, smiled. Afterward, he took his sister by the waist and told her to take him with her to the palace. There would be many strangers there and he was afraid that someone might kidnap her. The girl moved a little away from him and said that she was going to take him with her anyway, so he didn't have to worry. There was no point in kidnapping her. Cassidine said she just doesn't even realize how adorable she is. Ariana sighed and then said that she would already give him whatever he wanted. No need to keep testing her for lousiness. The boy smiled and asked his sister how he could not believe her. He felt so warm for the first time. Apparently it was because he really liked her. He looked her in the eye and told her that he had never once checked her out. When Ariana moved further away from him and asked why he was stealing things, the girl said a book went missing three weeks ago. She knows he took it and put it back. Cassidine was very surprised at first, but then smiled and said that he hadn't stolen her book. The girl was starting to get angry. She said he was the only one in her bedroom that night. Why does he say he's innocent? She thinks he had his own reasons for doing that and it doesn't matter that he stole the book. What mattered to her was that he had just lied to her in that moment. Ariana put her hand to his face. Cassidine took her hand and asked if she already knew everything. Why didn't she point it out right away? Ariana said it was because they were family, but then Cassidine squeezed her hand even tighter. The girl was very surprised, 
but after a short silence the guy said that she would be a ray of light in the pitch darkness, and he wouldn't dare to lie to her anymore. The girl replied that he could take any book he wanted or let him tell her, and she would help him find it. The guy thanked her for her kindness, and said he was just wondering what books she was reading, and he apologizes again, saying he should have told her the truth. Ariana said that was okay, and asked him if there was anything he'd looked out for along the way, and if he wanted anything, let him tell her. Then the guy said there was something he would like after all. The girl asked, And what is that? Cassidine smiled, looked at her and said she was the one. Ariana didn't know what to answer, and thought that she had expected some sort of normal response from him for nothing after all. Cassidine had not visited her room for some time after that day, and in general they had little contact. Well, the day before the prince's birthday, the girl was sitting in her room reading a newspaper that read, The winner of the 829th year's imperial fencing competition is the Archduke. And on and on. Ariana, after reading this, thought that there was a monster after all. Even with such an infirm body, he managed to win the competition. Who would have thought that he had a heart condition? The girl stalked him for a year, but only learned of his illness when he lost consciousness. But suddenly someone knocked on the girl's door. Then her brother's voice was heard and he said he wanted to come in. Ariana started putting the paper away and told him to come in. When she saw the guy, she asked him why he hadn't stopped by lately. Cassidine sat down next to her and wondered if she had been expecting his visit, smiling. The girl said that sometimes. Then the brother replied that he was very glad that she cared about him. Ariana said he couldn't sleep, but now he's probably used to the change of scenery and can sleep normally. The boy said it was only because of her, but being near her was more important to him. Ariana said that he goes to his place at dawn anyway. Cassidine lay in bed and said that if others found out about them, there would be trouble. That's why he's leaving in the morning. Ariana replied that if he really didn't want trouble, he wouldn't come to her at night. Cassidine ignored her words and said that she was beautiful in the light of the sun, but no less beautiful in the darkness of the night. He likes looking into her blue eyes, like a bottomless lake of eyes. Ariana said afterward that she too thought about a lot of things when she looked into his violet eyes, especially when he wrinkled his forehead, looking into the void. Always she wondered what he was thinking about at times like this. Cassidine held out his hand to her and told her that he was always thinking only of her. Ariana said, Get into bed, and added that a maid had seen him leave the manor in the middle of the night a few days ago. Then she asked, What on earth was he doing outside at a time like this? The boy replied that he was just going out for some fresh air. Ariana looked at him and wondered if he really thought she would believe that. Sasha told her that he hadn't been back until dawn, but she simply told him that it made sense then. The night that had been full of lies dissolved into twilight and was replaced by morning. All the maids lit up because it was a very important day as Ariana must go to the crown prince's birthday party. After a few hours they finally finished their preparations and Ariana was ready. Sasha looked at her and said that she looked beautiful, and Lady is definitely going to be the star of that reception. Another maid said she was even jealous of her dance partner. Ariana really did look stunning. Then Sasha asked the girl, Does she like the dress? She replied that yes, it was very beautiful. She thought that Cassidine would be the star of the reception. The man was already standing waiting for her at the door, all dressed up and ready to go. Then he met the girl's gaze and said that for a second, he thought he saw an angel. After the preparations were finished, the man and the girl went out into the courtyard, where a carriage was already waiting for them. Sasha, who had accompanied them, wished the lady a quiet reception. Cassidine, who was already the first to enter the wagon, held out his sister's hand and offered his assistance. Ariana, of course, did not refuse. She got into the wagon, they held hands and sat side by side. Then she said the seat across from her was free, and he could let go of her hand. But Cassidine smiled and said that he wanted to be near her for at least a little while. After that, he leaned into her shoulder and said that his sister smelled so nice. He really wished time would stop. Afterward, the guy said that if everyone at the reception devoured her with their eyes, he would be angry. Ariana sighed and told him to stop joking. But the guy replied that it wasn't a joke at all. At that moment, the girl let go of his hand. And she asked him why he was acting like that. He's her little brother and she really wonders why he lies to her all the time. She realizes that he's unlikely to say what the real reason is, but she still wants to know. Then she turned to him, met his gaze, and asked if he would consider it greedy of her. For some time they passed in silence. 
Then Cassidine, after thinking it over, spoke first. He asked his sister if that meant she didn't believe him, but the girl immediately replied that it wasn't like that at all. It's just that when he lies, the corner of his lips lift upward, and his eyelashes flutter slightly over his eyes. Ariana smiled and said he couldn't lie at all, giving himself away right away. Cassidine smiled then and asked who she really was, but suddenly their conversation was interrupted by the coachman, who said that they had arrived. And at that moment, their carriage pulled up to the Imperial Palace. Ariana had been there often, especially as a child. The county's lands are so close to the Imperial Palace that in case of danger, they can come to the rescue as soon as possible. Because of this, there were even many rumors as if Ariana would claim the title of Crown Princess. When their wagon stopped at the entrance, Cassidine said in a cold voice that they had finally arrived. After that, the guy came out first and helped his sister down. But then she saw his surprised face and asked if he had anything to say. Cassidine replied that she was just an insanely beautiful girl. She sighed and said that he was teeming with compliments today, but added that he was beautiful too. As they walked towards the palace, the boy said he would appreciate it more if she called him manly. Ariana replied that they would stop there then. As they approached the entrance, the guard accepted the girl's invitation and asked who it was next to her. Ariana was immediately startled because all the guards and guests present began to look at them. Well then she quickly said that this was her little brother and his name was Cassidine. Then the guard looked at the envelope and read there that it was Count Serkia's family. After that she added that it was all right then. They could pass. The entire event took place in the Imperial Castle, specifically in the Crystal Hall. When brother and sister stepped inside, Ariana thought it was just like that in her mind. The girl also remembered that to the lady he must be late for the appointment, there is only one difference from the past. It is that Cassidine is standing next to her. When the young people entered the hall, some girl with red hair immediately ran to them. She turned to Lady Serkia and said that they had not seen each other for a long time. Ariana told Lady Christine that she was very happy to see them. That girl laughed and said she was honored that she remembered who she was. Ariana thought at that moment how could she not remember. The girl's name was Aveli Christine. She's a lady from Earl Christine's family who got rich mining diamonds. Over a hundred servants died in their mines. And she's the one who started the rumor that there's a hidden mine in their family, due to Ariana having gems that she doesn't. But then Aveli asked the girl who it was that was standing beside her and accompanying her. At that moment, the guy bowed and said that he was greeting her and his name was Cassidine. The girl began to admire the guy and said that he had such a beautiful voice. Ariana said it was her little brother. All the girls were shocked who were standing next to them. Normally, they would have just started laughing amongst themselves, like a pack of dogs surrounding their prey. Like a pack of dogs surrounding their prey. But then suddenly, one of the ladies present said that she thought Count Serkia only had a daughter. But then suddenly another lady intervened in the conversation and asked if the reason he didn't appear in society was because they wanted to keep him just for themselves. Ariana had no way of knowing what was even going on. She just didn't want to waste her mental energy on this chaos. The ladies started talking. One of them asked how such a splendid man could have been hidden at all, and the other asked if Mr. Cassidine had a sweetheart. The girls came closer and closer to the guy. One of them said that if he was okay with it, she would invite him to her house. But the other lady was indignant and told her not to break the line. Cassidine smiled politely and said that he didn't have a sweetheart, but he already had one person in his heart. The girls were shocked. One of the ladies immediately asked who the lucky lady was. The guy said that you, their first meeting, she was wearing a beautiful blue dress and a necklace of blue sapphires around her neck. And at that moment, he glimpsed a glimpse of his sister saying that he could not take his eyes off of her. She was so beautiful that it seemed to him a sin to divert his attention in another direction. The man told the girls that his heart belongs to her completely and there's no room in it for others. Then suddenly the girl started asking what her last name was. Ariana thought to herself, just so it wouldn't be that. And then, when the guy already wanted to answer, the voice of the butler sounded, saying that guests could meet His Majesty the Prince. And at that moment, the door swung open, and the prince began to enter the crystal hall, and the butler told them to greet the lesser son of the empire. Afterward, Leon de Crasseville sat on his throne and made a speech. Guy thanked everyone for coming to the meeting despite his busyness, and everyone bowed to him in return. In fact, it's the prince who was originally supposed to take Cassidine as a closer to himself. Ariana thought it was the best choice to protect her family, so she shouldn't feel guilty. 
At this point, all the guests took their wine glasses, and the prince told them all to forget about their problems and just enjoy the evening. Then those present raised their glasses up and began to congratulate his majesty. And at that moment, Ariana looked at her brother, who brought the vein closer to his lips, but he didn't drink anything. He smiled evilly. And in that second, they heard the prince start to choke, put down his wine glass, and start coughing violently. The prince fell to the floor, and all the guests immediately began to run up and fuss. They did not understand who had dared to do this. One of the guests came up and said that he was the one who had someone put poison in the prince's glass, causing him to fall. And at this point, some of the guests started to feel sick too, and it was unclear whether it was because of the wine or excitement. Ariana was in shock. She didn't understand what was going on, because in her past life it had never happened that the prince had fainted. They had just been at the reception until well into the night, and Damien had come with the lineup. But at that moment, the girl remembered how her brother had asked her sister to take him with her to the reception. Then she looked in horror at Cassidine, who was covering his vile smile with his hand so no one would see. Ariana didn't understand why he did it. After all, he had been the most loyal servant to the prince in his past life. At that moment, the girl started to remember all the situations that were together with Cassidine, and thought if he was the prince of the kingdom of Chiron, which had completely disappeared from the map, that explains what happened. But in his previous life, he was the prince's retainer for three whole years. But she doesn't understand what it was all for. Is it simple and dirty revenge? Ariana thought about how many times he had to suffer, and maybe she could understand why he did it after all, that he had to hide his feelings all the time. Suddenly Ariana touched his hand and said in a whisper that he was the prince of the kingdom of Hyren. Cassidine looked at the girl in horror and wondered what it was she had just said. But then suddenly the voice of the guards was heard, saying that no one present could leave the place until the end of the investigation. Everyone present immediately began to panic and ask what it meant, already approaching the exit. But the guards said that it was an order from the emperor, and perhaps the criminal was now at the banquet. If they behave suspiciously or forcefully try to go outside, they will be immediately considered as their criminals. Suddenly the man panicked and asked what it meant that the culprit was now among them. Who dared to do such a thing? On his birthday, he could swear on his title that he certainly didn't do that. The other guests began to nod in agreement, but the guard said they would find out everything through investigation. People immediately started yelling that it was them, them. Let them be let out already, they want to go home. Ariana and Cassidine stood away from the crowd. At that moment, the girl touched the boy's trembling hand. She realized that this trembling had nothing to do with fear but because of the rage towards her. Yes, she caught the beast. But then she says it's okay, but don't let him do it again. She says it's for his own good. Cassidine looked at her in surprise and the girl said she would protect him whatever it cost her. So after a while a guard came out to them and told Lady Ariana that His Highness the Emperor was calling for her. The people immediately started whispering and the girl said she understood. After that, she turned to Cassidine and smiled. When she went, she thought that again there would be various rumors that she would be the future empress. When Ariana entered the room, she saw the emperor bent over the body of his son. Seeing that man turn around, she bowed to the shining son of the empire and saluted. But the emperor angrily told her to cure her son as soon as possible. The girl ran up and replied that of course she would do it now. When she approached the prince's body, she saw that he was very pale. The poison must have spread all over his body. 